What's good, everybody? It's your man, B. Vaughn, here with We Create Music TV. And today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite things to talk about, which is the Machine MK3. And I'm going to share with you my six sampling techniques within this Machine MK3. Nothing super complicated, but things that can help take your game to the next level. You know how producers are always talking about taking stuff to the next level. So what I'm going to share with you today is going to help you take your sampling game to the next level. Once again, these things are super easy to do, but without further ado, let's get into it. We create music. All right, so here we are with, man, ah, the Machine MK3. If you own one of these, you know how I feel about this thing. This thing is amazing. And if you haven't seen my top five video about machine, make sure you go check it out. I'll try to make sure I link it within this video so that you can jump right to it and check out my five top favorite things about the machine MK3. But this video is all about sampling within the machine MK3 techniques that you can use once again to take your game to the next level. All right. So the very first thing I'm going to talk about is how to loop a sample right something super easy but i'm going to walk you through that process of how to loop a sample within machine so i'm going to just click on uh, here the sampling you can see i already have a sample loaded up so let's take a listen to it hey hey right so super simple super easy but let's say that i don't want that end part right so let's say i don't want that do 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 let's say I don't want that and I just want to kind of get rid of some of that second part of of the loop so there's a couple of things that you can do in the machine mk3 and I don't really see videos kind of talking about these two different things but you'll notice on this screen here on the left you have something here that says play range right and you have a start and you have an end but if you click or select this arrow here it changes to selection range, right? And that allows you to select a certain range within this particular loop and to edit only that particular area within that, within that loop, right? So I'll show you how to do that. So you can have the ability to use your play range. And if you adjust the start and the end, notice how it only plays that particular selection it doesn't play the rest of the of the loop itself All right so that's what happens when you do the play range but if i was to do the selection range it allows me to still play the loop but only manipulate that part of the selection and i'll show you how to do that right it's super cool but i'll show you how to do that part as well but I, in this case i am going to utilize the play range to cut out the other parts that i don't want so we'll go here and we will take out our our end, right? Of course, you know, you have the zoom feature that you can use within machine. All right, so that's the only part that I want, All right? So then I come up here to this part of the screen and then I'm looking for truncate, All right? Once I truncate, of course, truncate, if you've been in the music production game for a while, you know what truncate is. So I don't really have to explain what truncate is. Of course, it just, cuts down the selection that you don't want and keeps the selection that you that you do want. Okay, so once I select that sample, uh, the pieces that I want, I click apply and now I have, I have the part that I want. But of course, I mean, you can lay this down and then ensure that it goes through the whole process to ensure that it loops appropriately and that it has the right type of you know selection that you want because you may have to go back and kind of maybe edit the end or the beginning depending on where you made that particular cut and it's super easy you just record it all right and once you record it you take all that stuff off i'm going to make sure i come back but i want to check it so i'm going to go to my events and then i can choose what I selected and I can make sure that it's in the right length 
that I want for that. And that way it gives you the ability to ensure that it has looped appropriately. So then you can play it back. And if you, and if you had to make adjustments to it, then you could, right? You could go in and then you can ensure that the length is set appropriately. You could then go back and then you can, of course, zoom in, edit the end part where you need to edit. You can do a lot of different things, but the whole point of this one is just to show you how to loop a sample. Hey, hey, okay. <laughs> All right, so enough of that. So that's the first thing, is how to loop a sample. The next thing I wanna show you is how, something super easy, right, which is all about reversing a sample. So once again, we go into sampling, but there's two ways to do this. There's two ways to do the reversing of a sample within the machine MK3, right? So you can first go into the actual sample itself, then you can utilize the functions over here to select the reverse option, hit apply, and it, re it will reverse that particular sound for you. So that's the first option. Or you can come out of the sampling and then you are presented with a bunch of different options here. You'll notice the third option here, which says reverse. You just select that to on and it will it will reverse a sample for you. All right, so if I take it off. You'll notice that it has now gone back to being normal. So there's two ways to do it, All right? So the first is you can, once you load that sample, you can just go to your third selection here for this third knob and choose to set the reverse to on, or you can go into sampling select it here on the right side of your options and, make, and then click apply and it will perform the same function. All right, so that's the ability to do two ways of reversing a sample within machine, All right? And of course, you know, the latest rage, rave is to take a sample and reverse it and you know, do other things on it, make it sound different. But that's just another creative way to sample or at least to manipulate a sample within machine, right? Because that's really what I'm talking about is how to manipulate a sample within this amazing device. So that's the second way. So let's talk about the third way, which is something that I think is super cool, which is learning how to cut, copy, or duplicate and do a couple of other things with a particular sample. So I have this guitar sample that I have here. All right, so let's take a listen to it. Okay, so let's say that I wanted to do some things with this particular sample. Of course, you know, you have the thing that you can do what I just talked about, which is reversing the sample. But let's say I wanted to do some other things. Let's say that there were parts of this particular sample that I wanted to cut out or duplicate or copy or silence or reverse. I can actually in this particular sample reverse a certain piece of that sample. And this is where the selection range comes in. Remember there's two types of ranges that you are able to utilize. First you have the play range which of course will cut that particular part and will only play that selection. And then you have the selection range, which gives me the ability to single out a certain part of this sample and then manipulate that sample. Let me get some water here real quick. Check out the We Create Music TV Cup. You'll be able to get some of these soon if you are interested in getting one. But 
you know, I had to display the merchandise. But back to what I was talking about. So I have the ability to do that. So I'm going to take that middle section with the selection range and I am going to, or at least the, the third piece of this sample, and I'm going to reverse that. So you'll notice that it doesn't cut off my selection at this particular point. But what I can do is something that is super cool. I mean, super cool. All right, so now that I've selected that, I click apply to reverse it. Now notice it only reverses that particular section. So let's take a listen back to it. And I can do that with the next part if I wanted to. I can go to this part of the selection range. And then I can say, you know what? I want to cut or not cut but I want to reverse this one as well. I want to kind of give it that same feel. And then if you mess up, you just shift undo, and then you go back in and you make that cut even more precise. Right, you see how I put that at the end? I don't want that part. So I can actually go in and take that part out if I don't want it. Super cool. I love doing that. I mean, that's something you can use when you're sampling. You can take a sample, you can chop of course, we're talking about chopping up samples, but I can do certain things to this particular sample by just altering a particular selection within that particular sample. So I'm going to undo all that stuff I just did. The sample is now back to normal. But let's say there was a part of this that I wanted to, let's say duplicate. All right, so that's the next part I'll show you is to duplicate a part of this. So once again, I'm still in the selection range. And now I like this part. So I'm going to duplicate this part of it right here. Okay, we'll keep all of this. Now I have the ability to duplicate that. So up here in the right screen, I'm going to find duplicate. And then I'm going to apply. Now notice it made another copy of it. It duplicated it. So now when I play it back. So now I have two of the same notes in there and I can duplicate as many things as I want. And of course, it's going to make the sample you know, a little bit longer, but it still fills in those areas for what I am duplicating. OK, so let's say I didn't want that. I wanted to take that out. So now I'm going to show you the next thing, which I'm going to go back to my selection range. And then I'm going to take out what I did. Of course, I can just do no shift and undo, but I don't want to do that. I am actually going to cut it or silence it. But the reason I'm doing it this way is just so I can show you what you do when you want to take something out, right? This is not going to make the sample go back to the way it was. I would have to do shift undo in order to, to do that. But let's say I wanted to cut that part out, right? Well, duh cut will do that for you. So let's say I cut it, but let's say I made a mistake in my cut, then I will need to shift undo that to get the sample back the way that it was, that it was supposed to be. But let's say I wasn't precise. So I can just go back, shift undo, and then my sample is now back to where it was. So let's say I wanted to copy and then move this somewhere completely different, the same piece. So I just go up here to my selection on my right screen. I'm going to choose copy. It copies it. Then what I could do is go into my selection range. Once again, remember selection range versus play range. Go to my selection range 
and I'm gonna put it somewhere weird, somewhere he like right here, right? Yeah, I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it there. Okay, and then I go to paste, and now that's there. Notice what happened. Shift undo, shift redo. It pasted it over that particular note. So if you wanted to completely take it out and replace it with that, you can do that. But let's say I didn't want to do that. Let's say I wanted to take this same piece. I just wanted to put it in a different section. I can paste it here. Now notice it added it because I added it in like a almost empty spot. So when I play it back, of course, you know, it's probably not going to sound right, but it gives you some flexibility and some options when you are manipulating that particular sample. I, let's say I wanted to silence this part, click apply. Now that part is no longer there. Right. These options give you so many things that you can do within machine. You could do so much. You can, of course, silence, cut, copy. Once you copy, you can paste, you can duplicate. I don't want to talk about stretch. I can fade in or fade out, but this helps me fade in or fade out that particular selection. Once again, the selection range is what you want to, to do versus the play range. If you're going to manipulate a certain part of that sample but i want to undo all that right i don't like any of that sample back to back to normal but that's those are just things that you can do you can cut you can copy you can paste you can duplicate play around with it you may find some something that's there that adds a little bit of creativity to how you sample within machine so give it a try go in and have fun with how to do that cut copy paste duplicate functionality Okay, something that's super easy to do, which is the next, which is my fourth, is how to filter. All right, so I have my sample here loaded, which is my... Of course, of course the guitar. So we're gonna talk about how to filter this. So you have these options, these arrows here that give you a bunch of different, different options. You'll notice it tells you how many pages you have. So right now I have page one of six. So if I continue to page over, you'll now notice that I have this option here that says filter and it's off. But if I turn it on, I can then select the different types of filters that I want to use. I can uh, use a low pass, a band pass, a high pass, or EQ. So I can say for this particular filter, I want to filter the low pass. <laughs> to do band pass. In this case, high pass. All right, so the, the filtering, the filtering gives you so many different options. And not only that, you can have some other flexibility with it for the cutoff and for the resonance and just play around with it, right? So it kind of gives you some flexibility with that, but you have other options that you can select. You can select your drive, right? All of these different options give you the ability, let me take it off the high pass, gives you the ability to do so much with this sound. <laughs> So play around with it because you can do some crazy stuff <laughs> with these samples and with oh one of the things that I like let me show you this is I have this sample here let's say I want to pan it I have a pan option right here which will pan it of course left to right I can set it to 100%. I'm going to take this drive off because that drive is really loud in my ear. But you can play around with it, right? It gives you so many different options. But the main point of this is to show you how you're able to filter different options 
and even EQ if you want to utilize that. So now you see that it changes to frequency width and gain as my EQ options. But if I want to do high pass, I can do that. If I wanted to do low pass, I can do that, right? So those are things that you can do to filter a sample within, within machine. All right, so on to the next one, which instead of filtering, we are now going to pitch, okay? So once again, super easy. I have, there's two ways to do this, okay? But figure out which way is, is best for you. So there's, once again, there's two ways, two ways to do this. There is, once you're not in the actual sample, so if you're not in this window and you're just here where you can see the sampler, you'll notice that there, your first option is your pitch gate. So I can decide to play this sample and then pitch it in the process up or down. Now, oh, let me take that off. Now, let me do that first. All right. Okay, there we go. Okay, now we're going to get into the whole pitch thing. So I can pitch it up, kind of get that chipmunk type sound, or pitch it down. So, you know, of course, when you are pitching things up and down, it will either speed it up or it will slow it down. I wish the machine had a way that you could, if you did tune, tune it up or pitch it up, that you could keep it at the same. Maybe somebody, maybe you out there who's a machine user knows how to do that with their machine so that instead of it getting faster, it just pitches it up. Without, without being fast, right? That would be awesome if you could figure out how to do that in machine. But that's just another way is to pitch your your samples, right? So we've talked about, let's see, how to loop a sample, which was the first one, how to reverse a sample, how to cut, copy, duplicate, silence a, a sample, how to filter a sample, and how to pitch a sample. So I'm gonna talk about my last one, which of course is one of the most funnest, that's, that's the word I'm gonna to use today, funnest things you can do, which of course is chopping a sample. There's so many things you can do when you chop a sample. This is a the piano sample. So now you may see me do that twist this knob when I'm playing a sample. That's because I don't want to hear the whole sample play. And so I just take it from one shot to ADSR and it, it cuts it off. Instead of trying to hit restart loop, it's just going to restart the sample and continue to play the other one. And I don't want it to do that. Okay. So there's different options you have when it comes to chopping up a sample. You can allow machine to do it or you can do it yourself. So the next option is slice. You'll notice here that there are several options that I have for the slicer. I can do manual, which is what I would do myself, but I have different options. I have grid, split, and detect. If I do grid, notice it puts it in a, it just chops it up automatically. And it tells me, okay, you chose grid, you have fourth of, of a um, sample, the BPM is auto, the adjust, we're not gonna really worry about. But I can take this and decide if I want fourth, eighth, 16th, 32, et cetera. So I'm gonna leave it at fourth, but it's, but watch how it sounds. Right, so it's chopping up each of those different transients within this particular loop. I may not want to do that, right? I may like it the way that, that I had it previously. But let's say I want to do split. Split puts it in however many slices you indicate. I can do four, I can do eight, I can do 16, and I can do 32. Ty uh, you know, on my chops, on my uh, on my pads but if I do 16 it puts it on 16 if I do 32 I have to go over to the next bank how you get to the next bank is you hold shift and you are faced with an option here that says bank you press to the next bank and then you have the rest of your 
samples. Okay, but I don't want to do that either. But it's an option if you decide to do that. Then you have detect. Now detect is going to try to detect all the different transients within your sample automatically. You can set the sensitivity for it. Let's say I want to set the sensitivity low, then it's only going to find those particular transients at 19%. But if I turn this, the sensitivity all the way up, it's going to find every single little teeny transient within that sample. Which makes it really hard to play back. So I don't, I don't usually use that particular function which for detect. And of course, once again, I like chopping my samples up. So of course, chopping up a sample within machine is super easy. Once you are on slice, you have manual, you can, it already has this pad blinking for you. You just go and manually chop it. Okay, so the sample is chopped. And you play around with it however you want to figure out a good pattern for it, but it's now chopped. You can do whatever you want to do with it. But here's the, 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 the clincher with this whole thing. If you want to get this sample onto the pad so that you're able to play them back so that you can record it, what you need to do is to select a group. You're gonna to have to put this onto a group, okay? That you have to. Click apply, right? You notice it has this button flashing. You don't want that. You want to press group, right? Once you press the group, you click okay. Ah, I'm glad it did that. All right. So you hear that they're overlapping with, with one another. We don't want them to overlap. So what you need to do is go back into your sample. Okay. Go back into your sample. Oh, no, actually you don't want to go back into your sample. You want to come out of that sample, go back to where it originally was. Click on sound, go up to pad, click, make sure you click pad and we're going to put it in a choke group, right? That's the first thing we're going to do is to put it in a choke group. So choking of course is when one sample cuts off the other sample so it doesn't play itself over, right? So that's what we want to do. Make sure we choke it. Then we got to set the polyphony for that particular sample to one. That way it does not all right, it just sets that polyphony. There's not another uh, voices playing, so we have that ability to do that. All right, so that's what we want to make sure that we do for this. Once again, we set the choke. Now we have the ability to, right? What I don't like is that you got to do it for each one. If you if you know a way of where we can do it collectively, that is what I want to know. Maybe I need to go back and research that. But if you know how to do it, let me know. But I'm going to set all of these legatos to, to one. Because I just like setting them all to, to one. I make sure my choke groups are set. For each one. Once again, like I said, this is just how I do it. Now there may be a better process up there. If it is, hip your boy to it so that I don't have to go through that 
and do it that way, right? So let me know if you know how to do that. Probably after you watch this video, I'm probably going to figure that out, how to do that myself. But once again, you know, I don't want you to sit here and watching a, a 50 minute video, but those are just my tips on how to sample and manipulate samples within machine. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if you have other ways, I'll be interested to hear how you manipulate samples within machine. Once again, thanks for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. I'm out. Have fun watching this video. Have fun being creative with machine. We out. Peace.